All righty then, welcome aboard, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Quant Trader's Guide to Algobox. Tonight, we have a very special topic that we're going to be hitting on. I wonder if you can guess what that might be. Oh, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's super gigantic PNLosaurus. Oh no, that's right. It's Algobox. Fully automated trading algorithm. We are going to be going over the details of how we use that. If you missed part one, go back and watch part one, or you're going to be a little bit lost as we get into our system. Now, uh, this is a trading setup for our kind of standard layouts here, trading Algobox in general. This is not the same as LunchBot. So we want to cover that first. Tonight is going to be very, very in-depth. So stay tuned and buckle up. Make sure you got your notepads ready. And I'm going to turn this music on down just a little bit more. Um, almost down to nothing as we get into this one because we are going to be stopping and starting, pausing, etc. as we are going through performance results and setups on the Algobox. Now, first thing I need to find is my control center that seems to be hiding on me. I believe it's back behind one of these. Here we go. And so first thing, make sure you flip over to the LunchBot workspace. So I'm going to click on this one right here. And this is very, very handy if um, you are not on the proper contract month. So right now we're on the 06 on this LunchBot set up on this PC. So we're going to switch over here to the 09. This is a very nice feature of uh, NinjaTrader 8. It's going to roll those over for you. Super duper handy. Oops. <clears throat> All right. So I'm going to move my control panel up out of the way. We'll need that a little bit more here in a moment. Um, the first thing I want to make sure is that my strategies are attached to my charts. You'll notice right here, there are no strategies here. So I need to make sure that I've got Algobox loaded on each one of these. Uh, we did this in video one, so I'm going to skip through this and pause the video here as I add this on each one. But you go back to part one to go see how we do that. All right, so I've got the strategies loaded up on our charts. And if I bring up your control panel window, you should see those here as we talked about in previous video. Again, if you're a little bit lost there, go watch part one. I'm going to skip straight through most of this here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and enable <clears throat> all of these strategies on the current layouts and setups. Okay, so first thing I notice is that some of these are not on the proper bars. Um, so this one is here on the eights. I'm going to change this one to the twos. Oops. All right, so uh, we've got our standard settings, standard layout here. So uh, NASDAQ, a little bit of a quicker market. So again, higher algo bar here on the eights, RTY two. The rest of these are set to two, except for YM on fives. Now I want to test this out here. So there's several ways. Um, what we want to look at is performance and optimization here tonight, how to adjust any settings. Now, mind you, let's talk about what LunchBot is designed to do. LunchBot is designed to be the simplest robot that we have. Very few parameters, basically almost parameterless. Or I'm going to show you guys a series of those parameters that I really don't even want you to touch. Like you really just shouldn't touch them at all. The only thing we really want to optimize on is the range or in this case, the algo bars. And again, you can run this on range or algo bars, test it out to your heart's content. You can adjust on the fly. Again, I'll give you the default settings. Um, and usually they're pretty good. They're pretty good for pretty much any environment. If you're running them across um, seven or eight markets, like I kind of teach you guys is the best type of strategy for diversifying your robots to run across seven or eight instruments. Again, coming out of Ecclesiastes 11, great wisdom there in dividing your lots across seven J8s. Um, and we kind of talk about that a lot. You guys can visit our website if you want to get the whole scripture passage around how and where we get that wisdom from. But uh, the levels of diversification that we go to are sevens and eights. And interestingly enough, while it's a biblical principle, it's also supported by some of the top traders in the world. Some of those famous names I know you guys have all heard about uh, from the Buffets on down the line um, in a book called what we're talking about is uh, in Tony Robbins book Money. He ends up going and interviewing some of the top traders in the world and asked them how to do what they did and how could they translate that down to the small guy. Really cool that Tony Robbins took the time to do all that and got, you know, the only person who would be able to get those types of individuals to get sit down and do an interview and actually tell them their secrets. Well, the secret sauce came out to be, guess what? Dividing their lots into sevens, yay, eights. Isn't that fascinating? I find it extremely fascinating. So anyhow, once you have got your instruments laid out for yourself, um, across those, you can leave the defaults, but if you really want to optimize, we're gonna focus on that here this evening. Um, Algobar five, so I wanna change this one here real quick, and I'm gonna go over 
I'll put this one on the twos because this is kind of our standard entry layout for Aga bars for YM. Let's see how that one did. Okay, so YM on the twos in the last two weeks has actually lost money. So I'm actually kind of curious of that. Now I want to make a slight adjustment here. And again, these are this is the quick way to do this if you just want to test. So I'm going to change the data series again. Let's try the threes. All right, so the threes is going to make 3,655. You guys see how quick and easy that was? Hopefully you guys kind of follow what I'm doing here. The PL for, and how do we know it's two weeks? So um, let's do a couple of things. So if you're coming in here to your data series, okay, this is going to show you the the time, um, this the, the PL for the current um, layout for how many days are on your chart. Okay, this is for the last 14 days. Now, again, you need to take into account things like, was there an FOMC, contract rollover? You need to be very careful. Remember, you are the manager of your robots. Um, I'm gonna talk a lot about that as we get towards kind of the end of the video on discussing when to turn these on, when to have them off, how to manage them, etc. Okay, so follow with everything Harmonic I'm gonna pattern. talk about here tonight on the is teams. gonna be extremely important. Um, speaking of important, let me turn off the other workspaces here real quick. Otherwise, that's gonna get a little bit distracting workspaces uh, so those audios don't fire off <clears throat> while we're trying to do this now so these are some pretty good numbers over the last two weeks that's uh 4,000 that'll put us to 7,600 call it 7,700 three that's almost 10 three 12 five all right so 12 about 12,500 across these four instruments right here and I can quickly see that just here now um, there are more details in how to get into these. So on each one of these, you can right click and go to strategy performance as we've shown this in the previous video. So I won't take too much time to go through that, but I'm going to hit on that real time and historical. All right. And now we can start to see some in-depth stats. So 67, 66% profitable profit factor 1.7. These are the primary things that I always pay attention to right there, right? Uh, especially profit factor. I really care about profit factor almost everything, but you know, you can't have too low of a percent profitable um, with the profit factor. So keep that in mind, but these are pretty good stats overall. And 2,500 take in for this period over two weeks, okay? Uh, you have a closed window. Oh, well, let's look at a couple more stats while we're here. So let, let's look at it on a chart. Okay, so if you had started this off, again, this is a single instrument. Which one is this one? This is uh, ES, okay? So on ES, uh, you know, first day looks like we kind of come up to around a thousand over, might be two days, looks like two days, 13th or 14th. Then we have a drawdown on the 15th and the 16th. Then we kind of start moving up. We have a little bit of a drawdown here and then kind of take it off here. So, you know, pretty steady line, pretty nice. Um, let's put this one next to another one. So let's grab um, this one from the YM and make sure that our stats aren't completely out of whack here. So strategy performance, real time and historical. And I wish these wouldn't jump over to my way over to the left. It'd be nice if they came to this window, but yeah. um, okay, this one's looking even better. 77% profitable, profit factor 2.53. Awesome stuff there on the YM. Okay, so we kind of combine these and I always like to think about when I'm looking at these charts and laying these on top of each other. Like if you could if you could make this kind of semi-transparent and what you're trying to do is um, these little dips and things, what you want is, so this one dipped down, okay? But now I might want another one. So some other instrument might be, might be like this. Then we might have another instrument overlaid, kind of coming in here like this, maybe another one that kind of had to draw down there. Then we got another one that uh, maybe draw down here, but kind of came up right here and kind of looks like this. And eventually, again, getting seven or eight of these PL curves laying on top of each other. And uh, do I have one that I can overlay on all these? I think is it one that we got left here. Um, so we want to see this, right? If you're kind of drawing a diagonal line through this, so we want a nice smooth bell curve. I'm sorry, not bell curve. We want a nice smooth PL curve. And the way you smooth that out is, again, additional instruments. Now, that comes to a level where it's too much, right? That's why 7J8, if you're wondering what the perfect number for diversification is with a strategy set of robots, again, six or seven. I'm sorry, seven or eight. I just said seven or eight um, and, you know, seven minimum and eight max. Pretty simple, okay? So if you got seven good ones, but you don't have an eighth, that's okay. If you got eighth one that's also good, hey, throw, throw it in there. Um, 
So hopefully you guys kind of get that. Um, I do want to, while I'm here, I'm going to nerd out. And again, tonight is kind of all about the nerds. I am, I am going to go into all kinds of crazy details. I told you guys it's going to be a little bit longer on part two because um, I really just want to start to kind of dive into everything and um, look at even some of our most recent stats. Are 62% profitable, profit factor 1.19. So again, not as high here, but you know, still good, good percent profitable and 2,800 for two weeks. Um, not too bad. And last but not least, that was in. Oh wait, I should be. Oh yeah, so this one's four thousand. So let's look at this one. So four thousand for NQ strategy performance, real historical. And let's pull this one up here. So you know, you want to look at drawdown too. I should look at that. Ooh, so see this. This one's gonna be a. This one might might have some heartburn here. On was that the RTY? Yeah, so RTY had a 3,500 drawdown, right? Let's look at that one on a uh, on a chart analysis. And we like this one, though. That's a good max drawdown, 800 to make 4,000. Digging that. 77% profitable. Awesome. And 2.22 profit factor. Very, very nice. Now, let's look at the chart, see if there was a big drawdown. Now, NQ is looking real nice. Now, let's look at this one, though. This one had a pretty significant drawdown during here, during this time period. And again, this is one of those things that you have to, to do when you're doing fully automated. You have to, it's all about stats. You know, this is not, you're not, you can't be as accurate like you can with cyborg trading where you are the brain in the middle. You kind of let have to let the stats play out over time. All right, so that 3,500, this is over the two weeks. Like let's say that you had started this um, on the, you know, right at the, the beginning of a two week and you ran it for two weeks. Look, your first few days, I mean, you're sweating, right? And this is what I'm talking about and why you want to diversify your robots. Because again, any given market can have some kind of weird whatever going on. And you may find, I would go back and look at the history um, on the, looks like the 15th or 16th. Was there something going on? Was that F1C day? Again, those are days easy to avoid. Um, we'll talk about some of those rules here in a minute. Um, but you want to get that balance out because I almost I kind of see a little bit of a pattern here. It looked like other ones also kind of had a little bit of an issue on the first few days. Um, but you, you know, you're going to these are the things you have to kind of deal with when dealing with full auto. Again, if you're a person who really loves stats, look, full auto is probably going to be your bag. If you're not a person who loves stats, not really interested in that, or if you're completely OCD and very controlling and whatnot, a little bit like myself, I'm very, I like to control everything kind of thing. Like maybe letting bots kind of do things on their own and handle all the stuff might be unnerving to you, um, but you're gonna have to really, you know, enjoy this type of stuff. So again, if you're sitting here and you're bored to tears at me looking through this stuff, then this is probably not for you. But uh, again, so that was a pretty big drawdown. I saw, I think this was, is this the one? This is the one that had max. Yeah, so max drawdown minus 3,500. So over multiple days um, of loss there. Let's look at this on what days of the week that was. So day of the week. Okay, so it looks like the big drawdown day was actually a Tuesday. So that's not going to be an FOMC because an FOMC is going to be here. But that was a pre-FOMC day. Um, yeah, I mean, there's nothing I could really stand out if it was happening on a Wednesday or something. I might say, okay, it might be what that was from, but there's, I don't know if there was a way to avoid that or not. I don't know if the, I'd have to go back and look to see if there was a scheduled news event um, around that bigger drawdown day, if there was a way that we could have avoided.